www.ghostbusiness.com and if you like this video don't forget to smash the like button and share this video with as many people as you can and if you're not subscribed to my channel yet kindly do it so that you don't miss any of my videos so without any delay let's get started and today i'm gonna take the java skill assessment right so i'm gonna take the java skill assessment and this is gonna be very interesting so without any delay let's get started Damn! So first of all, 1.7 million people took this test, and that's quite cool. There will be 15 multiple choice questions. 1.5 minutes will be given for me for per questions, and if I score in the top 30 percent, I will earn the badge. Right? So without any delay, let's get started. Damn! So three, two, one, let's start the quiz. Okay, so let's see the first question. Normally, to access a static member of a class such as math.py, you would need to specify the class math. What would be the best way to allow you to use the sim to use simply pi in your code? Add a static import. This cannot be done. You all may, must always qualify references to static members with the class from which they came. Declare local copies of the constants in your code. Put the static members in an interface and inherit from that interface. I think the best way to do is uh, by adding a static import, right? So, yeah, I think uh, the best way to do this is a adding a static import. It is short and uh, it works completely fine so yeah that was quite easy what will be the result of this code try system.out.print hello world so it will go in the try if the, there is an error then go in the catch statement exception e and print out e and if there's uh, if there's an arithmetic exception then uh, print out e finally print out exclamation so it will not compile because the second catch statement is unreachable right so this is the correct answer because uh, there can't be two catch statements in one try catch block right so it won't be hello world it won't be hello world it will throw a runtime exception no it will show it will not compile because the second catch statement is unreachable okay next question what phrase indicates that a function receives a copy of each argument passed to it rather than a reference to the objects themselves passed by reference passed by value passed by occurrence and api call so this is passed by value when basically uh, a function receives a copy a passed by references when uh, when the, that's not the copy it is pointing to the same memory location but passed by value is when you get a copy of it and then uh, basically you if you change its value then the original value will not change for, for example you're passing a variable then if you change uh, the uh, property that re you received in the function then the variable uh, that was basically that you pass will not change right so this is passing by value it will pass a copy so what is displayed when this code is compiled and executed so we are importing java.util.hash map then we have a main class in this we have a main method and we are creating a hash map that can that has string uh, string uh, keys basically and integer values and we are just uh, its name is pantry and new hash map Right, then we are putting in it apples, right, and its value is three. Then we are putting oranges and its value is two. Then we are creating an integer current apples equals pantry dot get apples and pantry dot put apples current apples plus four. So it will uh, now override the previous value and basically seven uh, apples value will now be seven. And we are just printing out pantry dot get apples. So it will get apples and uh, its value is 7. So it will show us 7. Right. So the answer is 7. These are easy till now. Okay. 
What language constructs serve as a blueprint containing an object's properties and functionality? What language construct serves as a blueprint containing an object's properties and functionality? An instance, constructor, a class, a method. What language construct? So what, as I said, it is easy, a tricky question came. What language construct serves as a blueprint containing an object's properties and functionality? Um, instance, constructor, class, and or method. What language construct serves as a blueprint? What language construct so that the blueprint containing objects properties I think it's a constructor right so yeah I think it's constructor the answer is constructor which access modifier makes variables and methods visible only in the class when they are declared which access modifies modi which access modifier makes variables and methods visible only in the class where they are declared protected public private and explicit modifier it is private uh, when you have when you give the private modifier uh, uh, then only the variables are basically vi are visible only in the class right so it is private how do you add a duck called waddles to the arrayalist ducks so we have our how do you add a duck called waddles to the arraylist ducks let's see so we have a public class duck so we have a class duck in that we have a private string name and we have our duck constructor that is accepting a string name right so duck waddles equals new duck ducks dot add waddles so duck waddles okay ducks dot add Oh, ducks dot add waddles ducks dot add new duck waddles okay so over here we are not passing it a value it needs a value we are passing over here this can be an option duck duck and we are adding waddles so this will not work duck dot add new waddles waddles is nothing so i'll go with the second option because that is only the correct option i think what will this program print out to the console when executed? So we have a linked list, uh, we are importing linked list. And in, in our main method, we have a linked list full of integers, right? And we are adding 5 on 10. Oh, so easy. Uh, there's nothing surprising in this because we are adding 5, then 1, then 10. And then we're just printing the linked list. So it will show us 5, 1, 10. Nothing, nothing surprising, right? It will not change the order. What is the result of this code? 1 equals A equals 1, B equals 0, 1 divided by B, sorry, 1 divided by 0, and print C. It will run an output infinity, it will run an output 0, it will throw an arithmetic exception, it will not compile because of line 3. Oh, this is a confusing one. It will not output 0 because whenever number is It, it won't output infinity or zero it will throw an arithmetic exception so this is not allowed in maths right so it's an error so it will compile but it will show us an arithmetic exception right so i think <laughs> i'll go with the third option which approach cannot cannot be used to iterate over a list name the list the list but for each this is looking fine for int i equals zero i less than this total okay this is fine iterator at it iterator it the list dot iterator for it dot has next for object this is the for each this is fine it's between this and this right so over here i think this is the wrong one why because though this doesn't sound that much correct but i have a reasoning over here 
we use the it.hasnext method with the while loop, not the for loop, right? So it's confirmed the third one is the correct answer. You get a null pointer exception. What is most likely, what is the most likely cause? A field that needs to be open cannot be found. Your code has used up all available memory. No. And the object you are using has not been instantiated. A network connection has been lodged in the middle of communications. So it's not these two. A file that needs to be open. A file that needs to be open cannot be found. I don't think the object that you are using has not been instantiated. I think it is this one. It's just a guess. So it can be wrong or right. I don't know. How do you write a for each loop that will iterate over a realist pencil pencil case? Okay, so for pencil, how do you write? Okay, so for each pencil in pencil case, no. For pencil case dot next, no. Pencil, pencil, pencil case dot iterator and pencil. Oh, <laughs> this is tricky. So you get a pencil. I think it's the this it's this one because you get a pencil from pencil case it can, there's no in keyword it can't be like this and dot iterator I think I'll go with the I, I'll go with this one this is I think that's the correct option okay so you have a very hmm okay so yep so you have a variable name employees of type list, right? Employee containing multiple entries. The employee type has a method get name that returns the employee name, which statement properly extracts a list of employee names. Oh, tricky, tricky, tricky. So employees.stream.collect. So you have a variable of named employees that of type list employee containing multiple entries right so it contains multiple entries right so the employee type has a method get name that returns the employee name which statement properly exact extracts all the employees so employees are stream okay so employees are stream get name employees are stream dot map employees are collect filter I think it is this one right so I think it's that one <laughs> okay so which are valid keywords in a Java module descriptor module info dot Java requires exports provides employ employees Consume supplies, imports, exports. Does not consume supplies. It's not provides employees. Imports, exports, and requires exports. It can be either of the two. I think I have read this somewhere, maybe. I think it is requires exports. I think I have seen this somewhere. This kind of question. Um, right. So I'll go with requires exports. I hope I don't mess up this quiz. What type of variable can be assigned to only once? Final non-static. There's no non-static. Non -static, static private. So you can assign to only once to final. You cannot change its value afterwards. So let's see the results now. Oh man, I really want a badge. You didn't earn a badge. Oh. I didn't. Uh, guys, uh, I I have reviewed all my questions and I think I have one or two uh, mistakes. Uh, 
and like uh, the uh, first mistake was in question five uh, the correct answer was a class and that was a very silly mistake i did it a constructor and the second mistake was i think i'm not completely sure if that was a mistake but i think in the 13th question there was a mistake in that employee question right so i marked the first answer but i think it can be wrong or right both i'm not sure but if we take that both of them were wrong right so i have still got 13 correct right and only two wrong still linkedin didn't give me a badge right so i really wanted that badge and linkedin uh, didn't award me after just like one or two mistakes right so uh, yeah if anybody can help me uh like and i've reviewed my questions properly right so uh, uh if anybody can help me just um help me that uh, by uh, like why i didn't get the badge and how can i get it now because uh yeah that will be a great help i really wanted that badge so yeah if anybody can help me thank you